So I thought I'd talk to you from all the way behind the car this time. This episode is going to be about replacing all the bushings in the rear end of the car in order to get rid of all the play back there, which is a major cause of all the wheel hop. <laughs> So uh, let's get to it. So we're going to be dropping down the subframe in order to install solid subframe riser bushings, as well as to replace some worn out bushings in the LCA as well as knuckle. The first thing I'm going to be undoing are the four bolts that connect the drive shaft to the differential. Just leave it in gear while you're doing it so that way the drive shaft can't move and you can actually remove the bolts. 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench. I'm now going to take the car out of gear, rotate the drive shaft to where I can get another wrench on the next bolt, and then go back in, put it back in gear, and then undo the next bolt. So, drive shaft can be popped off now. Now what I'm going to be doing is disconnecting the e-brake line as well as the brake line. So the e-brake line over here is held in with this one clip. Once this clip is removed, this cable can be brought up and then the end of the cable slid off of the mechanism on the brake itself. So here's the clip that was on the e-brake line right there. Now we can pull up on the cable and bring it out like this. Okay, now I can get the e-brake cable is now out. Also all the way back there, there's a bracket for the e-brake cable that needs to be removed. So that one's already removed and you can see the bolt put back in its place. Next I'll be undoing the 12 millimeter bolt right here that's holding the uh, brake line to the brake caliper. First, make sure to catch the copper washers on here. What I like to do is reinstall this back into the caliper so I don't lose any of the hardware. And then I will tape up the bolts that way nothing gets in it. I then tape up the end of the brake line as well as tape a cloth around it just in case it leaks. There we go, the brake lines are now disconnected. Next, I'm gonna be unbolting the rear coilovers. So you can do this either from the top or the bottom, however I prefer the top. And of course, do that on the opposite side as well. All right, so now we're gonna see how much play is on this OEM bushing over here. The car's in the air, so there's no load on the wheels or anything. Now I'm going to jack up by the diff. And just now the car started to lift off. Now we'll lower it back down. So putting in the solid stuff from riser bushings is gonna help out a lot. After that, I'm gonna put a jack under the diff in order to support the subframe for when I remove the bolts. So on this side, I'm gonna loosen the 12 millimeter bolt all the way back here. I'm gonna remove the 12 millimeter bolt over here. Or not, excuse me. 12 millimeter bolt up here. Now the 17 millimeter nut, which holds the subframe in place. Take the bracket off, set that aside. Seventeen millimeter over here. Now I'm gonna remove the seventeen millimeter nut over here, holding the subframe in place. Now I'm gonna be lowering the jack, which will lower the subframe down onto the ground. And there we go. The subframe is out now. Here's where the e-brake cable brackets go. One right there. One right there. So those two need to get undone. And so you can see where it is related to everything else on the suspension. It is right up front there at the front of the diff. Remove the coilover bolt. I'm going to remove the cotter pin for the axle. I'm going to remove this cap for the bolt. I'm going to undo that nut for the axle. Now I'm going to do all the bolts for the LCA. Sway bar, end link. Also, if we, don't forget the washer for the axle. So here's the whole LCA knuckle setup out. Now I'm just gonna unbolt the brake caliper. There's that goes. Now I'm gonna unbolt the hub from the knuckle. Okay. 
put it aside. Then I'm gonna remove the plastic shield on the LCA. Now I'm gonna remove the cotter pin from the ball joint and unbolt the LCA from the knuckle. Anyways, now the LCA is separated from the knuckle. So we're gonna be pressing out the bushings in the knuckle and replacing them with the uh, polyurethane ones by energy suspension. They're stiffer than these old worn out ones which have you know 240,000 miles on them, make the car a lot more responsive. Usually I'd burn the rubber out so that way it's just the hollow sleeve like this and then push the sleeve out. But this time I'm just gonna try um, pushing it out without burning out the rubber, we'll see how it goes. All right, let's <laughs> see if this works. <laughs> it actually did work, so I didn't have to burn it out like I would this one. Just pushed out the entire thing as one piece. Used a 13 16 inch uh, socket over here to push it out on the ball joint press rented from Pep Boys. Nice clean hole. So I repeat that process with this bushing as well as this bushing to get them out. All the bushings are out now on the knuckle. Next thing I'll do is the rear lower control arm. We're gonna be removing the ball joint because it's all broken and worn apart. Now I'm gonna get off the annoying snap ring. <laughs> I actually just bought the snapping removal tool because I've never had this and I always had to do it with pliers and stuff, which is super annoying. Oh yeah. Now that the snap ring is off, I can move on to pressing out the ball joint. So we're pressing out the ball joint, I think I'm just a little bit weird, but I usually just like cutting off the shank first. Usually people don't do that, but to me it just seems way easier rather than dealing with this super long shank. So I'm just going to cut that off and then push it out. It takes like a minute and that's off. Now the ball joint is out and that seems way easier. Me just slapping that together rather than having to deal with the whole top section and trying to get it the shank to go through the hole over here and all that sort of stuff. So anyways, that's why I do it the way I do it. For the LCA bushings, I'm going to be burning them out with a torch. That sleeve comes out. That's now all cleaned out. Everything is good from there. I'm gonna repeat that process over here. That one's all cleaned out now too. Run it. Yeah, now just wait for everything to cool off. Now I'm gonna be removing all the control arms. And just like that, all the arms are off. I'm going to move on to removing the axles. There's the one off. That axle is out now. Yeah, I'm just going to remove the sway bar. So it looks like one of the previous owners actually put in um, energy suspension bushings for the rear sway bar, which that's pretty cool. All right, now I'm gonna unbolt the diff. We're gonna be replacing the stock rubber bushings in this subframe over here with uh, Offbeat Garage solid subframe riser bushings. And the reason for that is to get rid of all this plate they have. So these bushings have, you know, over 240,000 miles on them and they are completely loose. And that creates a whole bunch of slop in the rear end. And so we'll be removing these and then putting in the uh, solid subframe riser bushings, which will not only eliminate all the plate that the subframe has over here, but it'll also correct suspension geometry for better handling. We're gonna burn out the center of the bushings. So that way we can get the saws all in here and cut out the outer ring.
all burned out now, so it's just the metal sleeve on the outside that's remaining. Now that the rubber bushing is burned out, I'm gonna take the sawzall over here and then cut out the outer sleeve. So I'll just be cutting a slit in it, so that way I can use the screwdriver and hammer it, you know, kind of in, and then push the metal sleeve out. I'm also gonna be cutting it towards the inside part of the subframe, so that way, just in case I cut a little bit too far, it's on the reinforced part and it's not like on a super thin portion of it, which is on the outside. So this is all cut out now and pried off, so. Oh, okay. And that is the metal sleeve for the subframe bushing finally out now. So it's the same process for the rest of the bushing, so just repeat that until all the bushings are out and the sleeves are out. So the sleeve is just cut all the way down. Slight mark in here from where it's cut, but it's on the inside towards the reinforced section of the subframe, so it's not an issue. It's good. Very slight score, overall good. And that sleeve is out. So with all the bushings burned out and all the sleeves cut out, it's a good time now to clean up your subframe if you wanna get it painted or powder coated. This would be a good time to do it. Also take a chance to clean up your work area and just make things a lot nicer before you move on to the next step. The subframe has been pressure washed. However, there's still some grease spots left, kind of like this, which are really dirty and just the pressure washer, the coin wash, couldn't get it off. So I'm gonna take my wire wheel on a drill And just like that, the area is all cleaned up. So I'm just gonna continue doing that for the rest of the subframe until I get it clean. Then I scuffed everything up with a red Scotch-Brite pad. Uh, next thing I'm gonna be doing is wiping it down with acetone and that's gonna prep it right before paint. Really just try and prep it as best as you can, but really it's a subframe, so it's kind of like ridiculous to prep. And on top of that, um, everyone that I asked that already has a painted subframe says it wasn't even worth it to paint it. So they're like, don't even bother priming it or really prepping it that much because it's honestly like almost a complete waste of time. But anyways, that's that, and I'm gonna be uh, wiping down with acetone and then painting it. Okay, so here's the subframe. It's all cleaned up, wiped down with acetone, scuffed with red scotch Brite, And now I have it hung up in this little paint booth that I made, and so I'll just be uh, spraying it now. Okay, so I have my Fire Mist Purple over here, which is a single stage acrylic urethane, and then here is the um, reducer for it. So this paint is from TCP Global. The gun is also from TCP Global in their three gun set. And this is the uh, mini detail gun. And it's sprayed with a uh, you know, moisture filter and then the regulator, and then the regulator is set to about 22 PSI. Then to one part of the reducer. Just gonna make sure to stir this up. Okay, then I'm just gonna use a paint strainer and then strain the paint into the gun. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yo, how dank does that look? So there we go, that's the result of painting the subframe as well as the rear lower control arms. I think it came out great, so now I'm gonna start reassembling everything and pressing in the bushings. Since I'm gonna be pressing in the bushings, I just wanna make sure that this surface in here is clean, especially since it's just been painted so there has been some overspray inside. So what I'll do is I'll take my wire wheel on my drill and just clean out the inside surface to make sure it's clean and prepped for the subframe bushing to go in. And just like that, I can see that all the overspray is taken off and there's really nothing in there, so it's all clean and good to go. Moving on from the wire wheel, I can feel that there's a small lip over here. And so what may be necessary, depending on how your subframe is, is a small file to just file this lip down so that way the subframe bushing can actually slide in from the top. 
that feels pretty good now and there's no jagged edges on here for the subframe bushing to get caught on. So now I'm gonna move on to actually pushing the bushing in. So here's the solid subframe bushing that's going in. <laughs> As you can tell, it has a whole bunch of frost on it and that's because it's been in the freezer for the majority of the day. And the reason for that is to get the bushing to slightly shrink so that way it's easier to press in. Okay, and I'm gonna make sure that the bottom of the subframe is facing up. So these are gonna get pressed in from the bottom. And I have pieces of wood right under where the bushing is gonna go so that way I can support the subframe when hammering it. I'm gonna take my rubber mallet here and then hammer in the bushing. And just make sure it's seated all the way down to the bottom and that's it for the install. Then it's just a matter of repeating that process for the rest of the subframe bushings and installing them. And here's a view from the top of the subframe so you can see that the bushings sit nice and flush, giving you the most suspension geometry correction possible by moving the subframe up. So what I'm gonna be doing is removing the inner sleeve for the bushing on the LCA. So the sleeve is like this and it's in the bushing over here. It's very similar to the subframe, gonna cut towards the more reinforced section, take a sawzall, cut over here, and then after that, just uh, punch it out from the bottom. And I really should have done this before painting the LCA, but for whatever reason, I just like wasn't really focused on it, but I just forgot to do them. This arm is mounted. I'm gonna cut a slit into it. And then just like that, didn't even have to cut all the way through, and then the sleeve is out. So it takes maybe a minute or two per uh, bushing sleeve. So here we have the rear knuckle for the car. We're gonna be pushing in the bushings now. The trick that we have is to use um, a bolt. We just have a, like a, a nut as a spacer on there. So we'll put that on like that. Then we'll put the bushing on, and then another washer, and then a nut. And then we'll compress that into the hole because when we try just using it with a normal press, since there's nothing holding it in the center, yeah, the bushing tends to just like slip off to the side. So we're gonna tighten it down with the bolt first and kind of get it started. Then after that, we'll take it out and put it into the press and then press it all the way in. Okay, so we're just gonna be greasing it up with the supplied energy suspension grease. Um, I called them up and they said uh, marine grease is also usable. So there's also marine grease here just in case. I'm also gonna lube up the knuckle itself. We have the bushing. There is the bolt going through. And then the washer, okay, he's gonna hold it, and then we're just gonna tighten it down and push in the bushing. So the bushing's been pushed in on the side over here, and so we're gonna use this screwdriver to push in all the other sides, so that way it actually slips in. Well, maybe not enough pressure. Now it's been pushed in kind of all the way, so that way this lip is actually inside. Now we can finish pressing it in with the ball joint press. And the lip hasn't come out all the way over here, so we'll just use a screwdriver and then pry this up. And these are the metal sleeves that need to be pushed in here. We're gonna grease these up as well. So we'll just press in the sleeve. Then I'm just gonna hammer it flush. And there is the bushing and sleeve pushed in. So pretty much just repeat the process on this one, and then this one, and that's it. So this is another bushing in a different view. So there's that one installed, only one more left. So all three energy suspension bushings are pushed in now and this knuckle is done and ready to go back on the car. We're going to repeat the same process for the uh, two LCA bushings. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Keep going. There we go. Oh yeah. Okay. And there's the bushing installed. One more to do and that's it. So there's the two bushings done now. Next thing to do is the ball joint. 
So there's no such thing as S13 uh, ball joint replacements. Higher new arm from uh, Nissan. But what you can do is use, I believe these are Maxima or Sentra ball joints. So these are K9633 from Moog. And then these ones fit on the uh, rear lower control arms on an S13. Just ring it full. There's the ball joint pressed in. All I gotta do is put the snap ring over it. Or something. We need this. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. So the snap ring is on there. I gotta put the boot over top. I gotta put the Zerk fitting in it. And for whatever reason, Moog didn't put threads in here. So the Zerk fitting actually doesn't go in that nicely. So we, we just ended up tapping it. So now our fitting's done. And this lower control arm is done now. It just needs to be cleaned up so there's no grease on here. But it's ready to be put in the car. And we're just going to put one and a half of these 75W90 gear oil in there. Now we're going to install the diff onto the subframe. So that is the diff installed into the subframe now, and so I can use that as a jacking point to bring the whole subframe up and bolt it in. What we're going to be doing now is bolting up the e-brake cable bracket, and it's just easier to do when the subframe is down because the riser bushings push the subframe so high up that it is a lot harder to get these in when the subframe is actually bolted up. So we've gone to install the subframe and you can see the little rub mark over here. So that's where the subframe is now hitting part of the chassis because the subframe is so much higher now. So what we're going to do is just take a mini sledge and then hammer out this section of the frame in order to create clearance for the subframe to sit up. So since it's been hammered out, we're going to try and test fitting the subframe again and we're going to keep doing that until the subframe fits how it's supposed to. So the subframe is in with the uh, off -beat garage solid subframe riser bushings. I have my painted LCA um, with new energy suspension bushings in it, knuckle with energy suspension bushings in it, new ball joint in this LCA as well. So now it's just a matter of bolting everything up, which is pretty simple. Okay, bolting up the hub onto the knuckle. I think really the only thing left is to tighten everything and then do rotors, or do calipers. Everything's bolted up, so now it's just a matter of tightening down all the bolts. Something I didn't record but I did was uh, installing the energy suspension bushings on the rear sway bar. So I cleaned up the rear sway bar and put all the energy suspension bushings there. I've also done that on the previous car, which was the Drip Car 1, so you can check back on the older episode to see how that goes if you actually want to know. Besides that, I had to install the brakes and hook up the brake lines and then bleed the brakes following that. Last thing was that the axle boot on the right side was torn, so I got a brand new axle and I installed that when I was installing everything as well. And there's everything installed now. Sounds Daniel. So since everything is installed now, I can just go put on the wheels and that's it.
this point, I still had one piece left, which is the eccentric lockout kit that I was still waiting to come in. So once that came in, I went on to installing that on the car. What I'm going to be installing now is an eccentric lockout. So basically these are eccentric bolts over here. So these bolts can actually be moved to either go in more or come out more. And that's what is used for the uh, stock alignment adjustment with the stock arms. However, since these arms are adjustable, it isn't really necessary to have eccentric bolts over here. And the eccentric bolts tend to just be more of a pain when doing your alignment because every time you remove an arm and put it back in, there's the possibility that your eccentric bolt isn't lined up like where you previously had it and so it'll mess up your alignment. So what I'm gonna do is unbolt these eccentric bolts and install the eccentric uh, lockout kit, which is basically just bolts that lock out um, the eccentric feature. So here is the eccentric bolt removed as well as with the eccentric washer. Now I'll be installing the eccentric lockout kit. So the eccentric lockout kit consists of this bolt, then a washer over here, then you're gonna slide this through whatever suspension arm, either the toe arm or the rear upper control arm, and then put another washer on the back side, followed by another nut. So we'll take this eccentric lockout, you have the bolt, then you have the washer. Then on the other side, we'll put another washer and the nut, and just make sure that the washers sit inside their lips on both sides, and then just tighten it down. That's it, after it's been tightened, the eccentric lockout is installed, and now your bolt just sits solid right over there. Of course, an alignment is gonna be needed now. And that process just needs to be repeated on the other side as well as on the toe arm. That completes this video. Car feels great now, no more wheel hop in the back, nice solid feel. Um, overall, I think it was worth the time to go through everything, just have it all nice and new. <laughs>